Folk must have set their alarms for 9pm on a Sunday, because that's right, every week, 9pm on a Sunday, you get the guys for the Jabber Jabber podcast, live on your TV screens, live <laughs> on your smartphones. <laughs> Still wonder what happened to my teeth in that. <laughs> <laughs> the, power of, uh, the power of AI. That's not even AI. We're just calling everything AI now. Janice is in the house. She says, hey, hey, guys, Janice. It is... Uh, do we ever do we ever stop and say how thankful we are that you tune in from across the pond over there in Indiana? Uh, it's very much appreciated that you tune in every week for us, lad. You're a top. You're a top guy. <laughs> 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 I wind, I wind. Um, aye, so this week, what the hell is all that stuff, that move stuff? That... I don't know. I think it's something to do with the way I've positioned this mic. Hang on. I thought I thought you were doing it specifically to tell us like you've been eating something spicy or something. But it's uh, heavy, like... I... I used to I used to have my mic up here, and uh, then of late I've moved it to down here, and I think it's just more sensitive there. Like I'm assuming uh, you can't really hear it now. Um, I don't know. Nah, I'm well, hearing it right now. If I was to go, you will. Uh, but, um, just my normal. My favorite type of noise. Do you know they say people are serial killers that can't stand that noise? That and folk eating. Um, <laughs> I th- they say folk are serial killers. I reckon I'm probably going to be a serial killer at some point. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 look at that hat. <laughs> That's a serial killer written on you, man. Um, but the I, you know, the, there is there is something about the the sound of mastication that really kind of it does get on my nerves. Especially like see my my son. He's so bad for this when he's uh, if he's using his iPad or something or on his phone watching. Um, he loves Friday night dinner on Netflix. Loves it. So he'll be sitting Definitely watching your that. Son. Hundred <laughs> oh, percent, man. 100%. At his age, fucking huh? Friday night dinner. What the fuss? Oh, yeah, such your... Absolutely loves it, man. He seems to have idolised Jim, which is really not the best idol because he's a fucking weirdo. Um, mm. But like, in this, ep- there's one episode in particular where they they go for like an afternoon tea, but they call it a cream tea, and he orders a mm. creamy tea because he thinks that's what it is. So he gets a tea with whipped cream on it, and it's. Stated in the show that that's fucking weird and nobody does that. Guess who does it now? My son. So, uh, he's been influenced by the wrong people. But anyway, he'll have his headphones on and see if he's eating his dinner with his headphones on and he can't hear himself eat. He's like this. That's a, that's a, that's a doing right there, mate. That's what we're doing right there. I've had to say to him, it's like, it's like, Murray, see if you on. One headphone out because that's a riot, man. That's a riot. The sounds that it's come not right, man. That's a and, proper and kicking. That's... He does this, does this thing as well when he, he like he holds his breath without noticing. So he's sitting there like this, like he'll take a breath and he will. Are you are you sure your missus didn't have a thing with somebody we used to work with? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I took there the it is. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a second. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, I digress. Everybody here tuning in for the bag head and all that. The fuck's this shit? That's how you eat without J Mac. Eh? That's how you eat without J Mac. I don't get it. Oh, right. Are you, oh, right. Are you allowed to eat? You allowed to eat? Without eater. headphones. No, me. I'm not allowed to eat. Even if she says I am, I'm absolutely no lying bastard. Uh, Man, that's like <laughs> that's like saying that like your wife says you snore and you're like no don't it's like how do you well, know man <laughs> you can well I, I would know if i was eating loud but i wouldn't know if i was snoring um so i'll take it on everybody's word that i snore um but the loud eating thing nah no not at all so this week we have been um and i know uh j max sent me a couple of messages gonna have it out on this podcast right but before we do i'm gonna set the scene a wee bit following the death of her father a young woman inherits a rundown pub and discovers a dark secret within its basement. Bagheed, a shape-shifting creature. <laughs> Bagheed, <laughs> <laughs> a shape-shifting creature that will let you speak to lost loved ones, but without consequence. Right. So we have been gifted this film here from the guys at Fetch over Studio Canal. These uh, these guys are releasing this film on. Well, it's, it's already out. Uh, it came out on the 8th of April, I believe. Was it the 8th? It had a cinematic release. Oh, it did, because I brought it into cinema. That's where I first mm-hmm. watched it. Um, yeah. 
And I actually, again, we'll, we'll get into it. Uh, it had a, a cinematic release, but it came out on the 8th as a Blu-ray and DVD. You can buy it right now on Amazon. Available now, Amazon.com. It stars folks like these guys, Freya Allen, Jeremy Irvin, Ruby Barker, the man himself, Peter Mullen, Saffron Burrows, and Julika Jenkins. <laughs> Why is that funny? Because that is mine. <laughs> Julika. Julika. <laughs> Oh, Jalika! Jalika, what? I like a pint, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we were asked to review this, which I thought was class because I actually have already seen it. So, when it came up for review, I was like, eh, hell yeah. We missed out on uh, any interviews, but I will say there are some really good interviews coming soon with some great writer directors. So, stay tuned for that. We're in the middle of setting that up. J Mac, I'm sure you've seen the email. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> so keep an eye on it i totally um, have by the way <laughs> this might seem like i just ignore everything and let you deal with everything but no i do i do read the emails um, yeah, you read it. I, I just i let you deal with everything because i know you like to deal with everything <laughs> well i've got yeah <laughs> i just i've seen it before man I, I just show up here and chat this is i've got i've definitely got the easiest part of this duo that we've had going on for six fucking years crazy when you think about that it's just like having a child this podcast is a child when you think mm. of it. Yeah. yeah. So when I first watched Baghead, because I thought the let's just talk about the concept for a second, J Mac, before mm -hmm. we even talk about the film. The concept of having something, right? Something human, maybe even not human, in a basement with a bag over its head, and being able to connect with a love a lost loved one through that. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's a great concept. Because I sometimes think with certain films comes a great concept, but maybe not the execution. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I watched I watched the Netflix version. I've said this before. I watched the Netflix live action Death Note and went, that concept is phenomenal. So then I went and got the all the book series and I really caught up on it. And that opened my eyes to what that actually was because mm -hmm. I thought the concept is brilliant. You can do so much with it. Same with Baghead. And the, and I think it's very similar to the film Talk to Me. Like they're, they're very similar. <laughs> I, I did have uh, yeah. quite a few comparisons to that in my head when I was mm -hmm. watching it. Um yeah even down to the time limit it was mm -hmm. it was like the, there's there is a cut off before things can go tits up and yeah i was like it's like there's a bit of, a fair bit of talk to me in this um uh, but anyway which anyway, i keep going uh, but by the way bring all that on because it's been a while <clears> since <throat> we've had some great stuff eh? uh matthew Man says evening fellas good evening uh, uh, by the way matthew did you see matthew Man's art the clown poster recently no it's getting a lot of rave reviews online he done a uh, Terrifier 3 concept poster and even this, the Lauren Lavera from the actual film was like oh this is great so bravo Matthew Man anybody that's not already following him find him in the comments follow him check out his artwork his artwork's phenomenal he does a lot of stuff for us um, and he's he's uh, he's our brother <laughs> our, our uh, extended family uh, Janice says good concept but terrifying as heck right well the film is created by the same guys that made it uh, and what was the other films that were made it was the, the creators of it and what was it again i kind of mind another class film right but <laughs> creators of it an art class film anyway moving on uh. <laughs> <laughs> but Janice says, I've seen Matthew Man's work. Awesome stuff. Hey, I can't be overstated enough. Um, so, by the way, I think Baghead was an, initially a short, which I'll now need to track down, um, written by Alberto Corredor. <laughs> I'll give you that one. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> can make a fucking horror <laughs> film out of that one feature that you found on StreamYard. <laughs> Because that would really make me mad if you were lying, G Mac. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on StreamYard. I'm uh, doing it through my own stuff. <laughs> yeah, that macho man voice you did there just was added a lot. <laughs> oh man! Saw, saw a clip of him the other day, and it was it was him doing a promo, and uh, he forgot he didn't have his sunglasses on. <laughs> have you seen this one? And, and he's know. like during the he's he's like oh yeah, and he goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's funny. That's funny. Too much, too much good stuff to be happening. 
Um, so, hey, how good was it to see Peter Mullen in something cinematic? Yeah, I mean, it's been a... we've, we've seen him. He was in TV recently. He was in Ozark, which I thought it was excellent in Ozark. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but a flawless, it's been a while since we've... flawless American accent from a mm-hmm. a Scottish actor. Um, but again, one of the ones where if you were not familiar with him, you would think he was actually an American. Um, yeah. Stellar, stellar job in that film. And to be honest, he does a really good job in this film as well. I can't, I can't take it, anything away when from that. When does Peter Mullen not do a great job on anything he's doing? One of, one, of, one of the greats. I got this signed by Stephen. I'll need to get it signed by anybody else because we know quite a few people in this film. But this is one of Peter Mullen's finest pieces of work while in the Scottish scene. Um very proud to own a Blu-ray version of that, which is it's not hard to get, but you need to go your way to get it. You know what I mean? Um, I've still I've still got a feeling that's bootlegged in some way. Well, I've got the same one, but uh, the, as far as I know, and as far as <laughs> filmmakers know, there's never been an official Blu-ray release, so I don't, yeah. I don't know where that one's come from. But well, anyway. even if it is, even if it is, uh, I'm happy to own it. Whoever's done yeah. a good, whoever's done it has done a good job. So. Yeah class so the idea of baghead is that well i mean the, the whole storyline is based on a character called am i right in saying it was katie wasn't it was it katie oh i can't can it remember what was her name a young girl I, i'm sure it was katie um she, her dad her dad's deed which was peter mullen dies right at the start and she inherits this pub that he could never really leave and because he hasn't left this pub, he's very like he doesn't have a great relationship with his daughter. Iris. Iris. Yeah. <laughs> what a name, man. Iris. Kate, Katie's our pal. That's right, I fun yeah. stuff happens with Katie, man. Um so I so there's this wee hole in the wall, and as usual, it looks like son Matthew Man created, and it lives within a hole in the wall, but not only does it not like any spare change, mate. <laughs> I ain't one. Fucking. Um, you get thirty so, p for a cup of tea, mate. Yeah. That happened to me recently when I was trying to gut the cinema. Out. I went down to get a couple of couple of lattes eh, for the boys, and as I'm walking back up, some thing walked up to me and was like, "I ain't me go a flag <laughs> for our Americans." Watching tonight, a fag <laughs> the <a> cigarette. <laughs> I'd still love to know where that came from. Like, know, right? like, like you understand the term, like, oh, have you got a ciggy? You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's an abbreviation of cigarette. It's it's completely doable. <laughs> you got a fag. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's because you suck on it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. But um, someone came up and was like, me go off, why guy? And I'm like, that. no, I don't. <laughs> then he smoke. He's like, that. why don't you use a latte then? I went like, that. fuck off. <laughs> and that was the end of that story. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the best way to end a conversation with somebody you don't know. <laughs> now, who the fuck do you think you are just coming up asking for shit off me? Get the fuck for a stamp on your head, you fucking junkie bastard. <laughs> like, actually, get the fuck. Yeah, that's, that's why I hate the wee bouncy charity folk. Hey man, how's your day going? Uh, or when you're listening to your tunes and they're like that. And I'm like that. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking wanker. Here, uh, do you, oh, you're, try, you're trying to escape Tesco and they're standing there, man. Like that. <sighs> The thing is, it's, you, a, it's always the ones that make you feel really guilty for ignoring them that are outside Tesco. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's for it's for war veterans or it's, it's for you, you know like kids with cancer and you're just like oh I can't believe I'm walking past. <laughs> no, but you know what? Fuck all of them. Fuck all of them because it's no for the cause, right? They're not the money that never directly goes to these causes. Do you know what it's for? Raising awareness. I'm already aware <laughs> of how shit this fucking world is. I don't need some country to take my money to remind me of it. Fuck off. Anyway, <laughs> stop sea bombing, man. You're going to get us banned. You've already said frig like four times. <laughs> well, I'm talking about cigarette, man. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, so I heavy, I heavy enjoyed this film, right? And I was specifically 
for a, f- a few reasons, right? So when I suggested that you and Matthew would watch it and you both kind of came at me, you were like, <laughs> Matthew was more like, meh, right? But I just, I'm not getting it, right? So, well, I give you my my honest take on it before you can give me yours and Matthew Min types his. Yeah, please. Right, so I was watching it going, hmm, this thing's been alive for centuries, right? Nobody's been able to get past it. So we Iris better not best this thing because one thing I always say is if you're going to build something up to be what it is, it should act like it. Yeah. Voldemort should have slit Harry's throat, neighbor, right? <laughs> By Didney. Okay. But we accept that for what it is. So I remember watching it with the wife and going, she better die. Like this thing better succeed at the end, right? Fully better succeed. I says, otherwise you lose me. Mind that clock in the wall hang. <laughs> the house with the clock in the walls. Yeah. Aye. Like, oh, this thing's coming back after all these years. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. Kid, kid whips its ass. You've just lost me. You have just <laughs> lost me. So I thought the concept was great. <clears throat> I thought the the fact that a lot of it happens in the one room, brilliant. I don't think the performances were bad. I know you, you said that they kind of felt a wee bit East Enders, right? but I'm all right with that because it was built <clears throat> to the drama. There was a lot of backstory. Um, I could sniff that wee wanker out straight away. Right, so I thought that was <laughs> fairly obvious. Telegraphed. Um, the, uh, hi. The fact that there was n- like no character was really safe. I enjoyed the fact that my wife turned to me and goes, "She's no deed about a certain character." At a point where a character gets done in, I was like, "Perfect, perfect," <laughs> because this is what this <clears throat> this would happen. This absolutely would happen. Like if you go up against a demon, right? Know the type of demons that. Uh, Christopher Macklin opens portals and throws it on the just like it's throwing his fucking rubbish in. <laughs> no, that type of demon, the invisible ones. But if you come up against a physical just demon, go into a green bin or the blue bin, man. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you can't recycle Anunnaki, they go in the grey bin. Man. <laughs> Oh, you need to stop doing that. You're freaking me out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the Anunnaki didn't get recycled. <laughs> okay, man. Oh, man. They're single, mm. single use ectoplasms. Oh, uh, they're Ghostbusters man. filming. They're waiting to happen. So, I, <laughs> the fact that. Are we spoiling it? I mean, people are here to watch it that have already watched it. It's been out a wee while. The fact that this thing can succeed within this film. And does, I'm like yes. Totally, like it ticked the boxes for me. I, I enjoyed watching it. I was invested. The characters had enough backstory. I really felt there was a good friendship between the two main characters. Yeah, you know? I felt mm-hmm. Peter Mullen's love for his daughter. Totally felt it. I sympathised with him. He had to keep her away because there was something bigger than him, bigger than his life. You know, it was his responsibility. I felt mm-hmm. all of that come into play. I felt she disliked. I think it was unfair for her to dislike her dad as much as she did after finding out everything that she found out. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. I just I, I felt I felt it had everything I wanted it. So what was Matthew Mins put something here? I'm just going to see what he says here. He says, "Watched it last night. Love how it looked. Pub looked awesome. Just imagine the makers trying to come up with the name though. So we've got this woman who wears a bag on her head. <laughs> what are we going to call her?" <laughs> Bang heat. Um, so what, what was your what was your your feelings toward it, Gmac? Hey, my feeling is, in general, I think for a film that had a cinematic release, to me it seemed pretty cheap. Um, now oh, I'm, I'm not I'm not saying there's there's nothing against that, but you, like things can be done cheaply and well. One one thing that really stuck out to me. Um, mm. In regards to just the visual effects, because I think most of the stuff are, uh, in this is kind of practical effects. There's not much in the way of really out there um, demonic happenings. I mean, it's all it all pretty much happens in camera, except for mm-hmm. the fire. Now, for like the fire in this looked like it was done on Windows Media. Um, mm. it, it just for a film that had a cinematic release, I thought that's. 
Uh, that's really quite shonky for want of a better word. Uh, that's um, fair enough. But you can forgive that, though, but, right? But again, it's a horror film, so you, and we all know that horror films tend to be the cheapies that get made mm-hmm. just to yeah to kind of for directors to like cut their teeth and and learn how mm-hmm. to learn how to make a film. You start with a horror film; it's the best place to start because it's easy it's easy to make a horror film entertaining even if it's not mm-hmm. what would be classed as a good film it can still be fun if you try and make a drama that's not a good film it will just be a bad film you can mm-hmm. watch bad horror films and enjoy yourself um so i, c- I can forgive that side of the, the acting like i said to you before was a bit soapy for me um mm. peter mullen um peter mullen the shit out of it as he always does uh, yeah. um but unfortunately you only really see him mostly in like a kind of retrospective videotape yeah um or as like a okay, very occasionally as a, a kind of specter um i said well, that came out weird did you hear that a specter Spe- specter specter Spectar. Uh, oh how you doing man i'm just gonna roll down the street you know um <laughs> but <clears throat> uh so he did a good job but i did find basically every other character in it really quite quite soapy and overacting at times underacting at other times but never at the right times mm. do you know what i mean like there's a time for overacting like the al pacino at the end of the devil's advocate overacting to fuck but just chewing the shit out of everything whereas in this i felt like it was overacting at the scenes that didn't really matter too much and underacted at the scenes that actually should have had some heft behind them um I wouldn't say anybody did a bad job, but it was a soapy job. Uh, a soap mm. job. There we go. Um, the concept, like you said, I think the concept was actually really good, really clever. Um, I mean, the, the the basic thing is you give Baghead a personal possession of the person you want to speak to, and she, <laughs> she will essentially transform into this person. And it's it's not, as long as you stay within the time limit, you are talking to that person. It's not the demon pretending to be that person. You are actually talking to that person. But if you go by the time limit, shit changes, the eyes go black. And Mm -hmm. aye, all that stuff was cool. But I'll be honest, man, I just found it really, really boring. For for all of its things that it did right, I just, I was bored out my tits. And I'm not, the, I'm not the first person to say that. Um, my my favourite film critic also had the same opinion on it. Um, Kermode. Yeah, Kermode. Kermode. <laughs> you need to stop that, man. That's... <laughs> Anybody listening in, in the audio, Kevin just keeps zooming in on his own face. <laughs> like an old Bruce Lee film when folk are about to face off. I wish you could do it with my face as well. So it'd be like, boom, <laughs> boom, boom. boom. <laughs> Scotty Dog says a soap job sounds kinky. <laughs> I'll be honest, mate. Normally that's by myself, <laughs> and she's usually wearing a bag in her head. <laughs> she's not even there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I mean, do you not think it was it was pa- like the the pacing of it was just naff for me? I think it, like it starts you off like whirlwind it just the, the start of the film is just like whoa fucking hell shit happening and then for me the rest of it was like just watching a tap trip and waiting for the basin to fill up mm, i don't know nah i never felt like that i think it was a welcome to change for me right you know i just feel like it was different it was it was it was refreshing i left the cinema going <laughs> i was like i was like that yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get boring and easy. <laughs> yeah, it might. So, it might. Um, so I, I, I quite, I quite enjoyed it. I don't know. I just felt like give me more. See, there's a talk to me too coming. It and right. Again, no, I'm, I'm actually glad cool. about that because I, I felt like talk to me had like before I knew it, it was finished. Mm-hmm. And I was like, um, <laughs> what more? More. <laughs> please just get, give me give me a little bit more um i mean i and think that thing. that was a that was a 90 minute film that should have been two hours i felt like it, yeah it, it, it could have used a bit more um this this film 
to me felt like two hours when it was 90 minutes. The um, good thing about it as well, though, is um, the fact that the hand, the story's the hand. You don't need your main character. That's the type of film where as long as the hand's there, it doesn't matter whether it's a prequel, sequel, you could make about 10 of them and still have so many different stories and still be equally as good. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, it, like something like this set in the... The Victorian period or something could be cool as well. Like there, there is potential for this, and I think, mm -hmm. I think it would have worked really, really well as a short, right? Mm -hmm. And it, this happens a lot. You get a short that's amazing, so it gets picked up for a feature, and then the feature just falls flat in its arse. And I feel yeah. like for for me that this is what I felt like about this. I haven't seen the short. I, like you said, I, we'll need to look it out and have a Aye. have a, a swatch of it. But I, th I think that this this film really would work well as a short but i don't think it's feature material um, i don't think so no no I, I just i don't know and and by the way like the the look of the pub was was really cool like i said some mm -hmm. some good production value went into that but i didn't get, understand the external setting it seemed like an old like it was in an old mill or something mm. like it looked like new lanark <laughs> And I was like, I was like, is this a this pub? Is this a pub? It looks like a mill. And I don't quite understand that. <laughs> what? Glasgow. Oh, no, no, hey. By the way, New Lanark. I think see even just New Lanark itself. I feel there's a horror a horror film there. Do you know what I mean? There's a horror film waiting to be filmed there because <laughs> child <it's> labor. Like, <laughs> mate, Annie McLeod. When you go through that wee train, mm. right? And Annie McLeod. <laughs> I went, I went on that at Christmas time. It was fucking awesome. Uh, I really mate, enjoyed it. My kids love it. My daughter Gracie really likes it. Right? But she was like this. Like Annie McLeod talks to you and she's like, Yeah, and that's when I died. Let, let's not talk about that. How did she die? Something must have happened. There's a story. <laughs> I don't know. I, I Googled it. I couldn't find it. How did Annie McLeod die? I have no idea. No she idea. Died. She, I think she died mysteriously or, or she died tragically. Because when the wee hologram of her is talking to you, the wee actress, she says, you know, that I used to crawl about in the mills here, blah, 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 blah. And then until I died. Well, let's not talk about that. And she just cracks on with the rest of the tour. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, there's, some, <laughs> there's a story there, eh? They're going to tell us how you died then. <laughs> well, uh, I want to know how you died. <laughs> the thing is, when you're going around that place, you're looking at it going, there's many ways in which she could have popped her clogs. <laughs> yeah. Yep, it's like, yep. it's like, oh, they use children because they could get any bits of the machinery that the adults couldn't. <laughs> well, maybe it would just, mm, it's no good idea. It's no good idea. Nay emergency stop switches. <laughs> Wait, do you know, do you know how you get those films where it's like cults? Where like maybe mm -hmm. allowed to leave, and you know, and a new person that comes in, like Wicker Manny type thing. The new person that yeah. comes in is like, what the fuck is this place? That is like ripe for a film like that, then there, right? It's uh, like its it, own wee place away, isn't it? I don't know if it's one of these places that that ever does or allows like the paranormal investigations and stuff like that. I, I don't know. It, it's maybe too maybe commercial she... and too councilly for that. Do you know what I mean? Uh... Um. <laughs> You know what I'm thinking right now, eh? Uh, I am thinking you better fucking stop doing that before I freak out. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, we should go with the crew. That's what I mean, though. I don't, I don't know if it's if it's something that's even allowed there. I think the place is too commercialised for it. And I, I, like I said, I think it's mm. too councilly. I think there's too many local authorities with their fingers in that pie. It's not a, like a historic Scotland venue or an English heritage or something. I think it is a council thing. I could be wrong. But well, you know um, what I'm like. I don't take no for an answer, so I'll get us in. See what's what. Got a press passes. I still have a. I still have all my press passes that we've ever done, and I just look at them and I go, <laughs> "The fuck did we get one of them?" <laughs> uh, <laughs> still annoyed about the last one. I know, uh, but hey. What will be will be. That's what I know. That's all I know. Whatever will be will be. The future is ours. You see. Get the camera off your boss. <laughs> Get the camera off me. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, by the way, uh, heavy, heavy enjoyed Baghead. A anybody watching at home? Tell us. Did you did you watch it? Did you enjoy it? I heavy enjoyed it. 
Did you know enjoy it, GMAC? No, like you said, I just I just find it really, really intensely boring. Uh, there was moments where I thought, oh, this is getting interesting. Like all of a sudden she's not in the chair, even though she was strapped in. And I was well, like, oh I was like, oh, here we go. And then she she just didn't do anything. I was like, why did you not do anything? You sure she didn't do anything? Pretty sure. She never died, but it wasn't even really that worthwhile. You didn't even get to see what she did to her pal, man. It was off screen. Um, just all of a sudden she was pretending to be the ball. Um, I, there's there's potential in the concept. That's what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and I don't think it was executed particularly well. You're saying this is for the makers of it, and what the, what was that? I'm just sharing the podcast as I talk to you. It's oh, right, okay. multi multitasking. He's producing on site, um, always. <laughs> so. Uh, oh, I've lost my train of thought. God damn! You were saying um, that you just didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I got it. It's not. It's not overly cerebral. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's easy to get. In fact, no. There's one thing that didn't that did kind of annoy me a wee bit, but I don't really. I think it's too spoilery to talk about on here. But we'll talk about it after. What um, bit was that? No, I'm not telling you. It's, it's, it's something I see as a major plot hole. But I don't want to talk about it on oh, here. Oh, because... no. Talk about it right now, motherfucker. What's a major plot hole? Because I never... I never... Like... I didn't... Nothing baffled me. Right. Why did it end the way that it ended? And how did it... How did that never happen before? Because there was... There was the people that were in charge of making sure that didn't happen before were very fucking competent <laughs> they understood the assignment right yeah. but they they still they still pop their clogs while being owners of the building uh-huh so she should have been freed every time that happened no um no because the deal is that she needs to, they need to let them out. I. They need to kill you while you're there so she can take your body, the owner's body. And Peter Mullen was French toast. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody that died before either died in a way that she couldn't get to them. <laughs> oh, he was Scottish, so he's probably fried breed. <laughs> Right, breed. He's a tatty gone. So <laughs> that, that's he's a tatty's gone. <laughs> a tatty's gone. Um, but that's why I think the the previous owners, none of them died in a way that was advantageous towards the baghead. But she manipulated that boy. Yeah, the baghead. I wish it was called the baghead now. <laughs> Excuse me, thy bag heat, but shall you be joining us for dinner? <laughs> Will thy be removing thy bag from the heat? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're having too much fun with your wee setup. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, my setup's too simplistic. I think I'm just jealous. That's what it is. I'm just jealous. They're about 100 quid for those wee hangs. I'm just jealous. Just jealous. Then again, you need to get the camera. That's another 100 quid. That type of camera. Yeah. Like 120. So, but 220, you too can zoom. <laughs> 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 what a waste to go just to zoom in, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes as I'm setting all this up, I'm going, is it even worth it? I can I just click like, my mouth. So, <laughs> right, sh show us again. Show us again <laughs> what cost you £200. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what i really hate that head tracking stuff i i've got I all that really, but i like... really really hate that that does my head in nah, that'd be mm. pretty cool pretty nah it sucks balls I'm like, sucks balls <gasps> Fully in me. I'm like, oh whoa whoa <laughs> i've got a gimbal that does that by the way you just you, it locks onto you and then you just put it there and then it proper follows you i'm like whoa so if i was like out fishing i was like check this catch 
and I was walking about that would actually follow me. My DJI does it too. I mean, everything does it now, doesn't it? Any type of gimbal. Hey, but but, but I bag heat. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, so like, you, the, the makeup effects were decent, right? Mm-hmm. Like when when the when the bag bag head was kind of half revealed, putting the whatever into her mouth, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it was like, oh, that's that's pretty pretty horrific looking, right? Think of the germs but, and all. But then, but this is, I, I feel like the film was missold as well. The trailer I missells don't... it as as a creature feature almost, mm. um, where it's just not that you you get. The one reveal of the the baghead's full face and this kind of jump scare, horrible, haggy, witchy, toothy moment. Mm-hmm. But they put that in the trailer. They put yeah. it in the fucking trailer. So it kind of made it look like we were going to get like a, almost like a monster film, and then we we just we we didn't. We we got a a really slow. Well thought out, badly executed film. Hmm. Pretty odd of that. That's just my opinion. I, I'm not saying that I'm right. I just, it's just I disagree. How I felt about it. I disagree. Uh, I, I heavy like. How? How you? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just. I am. I, I'm shocked that you didn't. You didn't enjoy it as much as I did. I thought you would have. Same with Matt. You mean? Um. No. And I watched it in company as well. Like I think when you watch a, a horror film with with another person. It enhances the experience. Mm-hmm. Um, but the well, both, ears, my wife. Both, both ears were just like this. See that see that that gif with the monkey doing side eye? Mm-hmm. That's Aye. that's well, how we felt. I watched it with a wife, right? And when I left, I was like, oh, I really enjoyed that and I was kind of bigging it up. And I uh, after that, like my wife's very straightforward when she watches a film. It's either good or it's no. That's where it ends. Oh, it was good. Eh, that was shit. That's it. Right, so if you were to ask her a review, you're going to get one of those three answers. But me, when I leave, I'm like, "You get what I liked about this, and see the way they done that." Like that's how I speak to her. Right, she's like, "Ah, oh, I, I, she'll listen, but she doesn't add anything to it." You know what I mean? Right. So I, I, I left, giving her all these. I was like, "See the fact that they killed her." I says that that was good. I says because she shouldn't be alive in that scenario, like killing her. Like if you if you're that baggy thing and she fucks you up. Like how about how fucking ancient and ma- majestic and fucking magical were you really? Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I, so I left I, basically bigging it up because of that. I, that's what I'm saying. I don't think, like, I think when I sent you my review of it, I don't know if you've saved my review that I sent you. Um, if it's ready for, if it's queued up for playing. Um, but I don't know if that's something Not you can do can while, while, while we talk. Oh, um, I, I, I think I might have like. I didn't jump the gun as such. I still didn't enjoy it, but I didn't illustrate the the merits that the film does have, which is a good concept and even a decent twist. And a aye, the, there are elements of it that, that that can and could have worked, but for for me, it just it, it just didn't gel properly. The maybe the wrong filmmakers. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I heavy disagree, right? But your review you sent to me earlier on today, was it today? It was today, wasn't it? Yeah. And I was like, spoiler alert, man. So this is J Match review. <laughs> I think that was only part of it. Was it? You mean part of it? I'm pretty sure that it was a lot longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> no, because the one that's the one you sent. You says my review of Baghead, and I said, I said save it for tonight. No spoilers. That's the one. Yeah, I but I think it was nine seconds long. That was way too quick. No, I think that was nine seconds long. That was no. nine seconds long. Oh, we didn't. I didn't see it all then. Maybe you need to do it again. You didn't see that. Okay, three, two, one. It was definitely longer that time. Right, okay. <laughs> I'm like, that was eight, that was ages, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, by the way, I said to my wife, after you and Matthew man had kind of boo booed it a little bit, right? I says, Did I, am I definitely thinking of the right film here? I says to the wife, I goes, maybe watch Baghead, and I really liked it. And she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I says, 
what did you what did what was your opinion against you went it's all right i mean wasn't it whoa it was all right mm-hmm. that was that was her review of it man if only all film reviews were so simplistic <laughs> i know i know every well, film review on youtube three seconds all right <laughs> Zay. Uh, that was good. <laughs> no no mark out of t man Nah, I don't know. I, I'm defending it. I think the, when they drop Baghead 2, if that's going to happen, I'm heavy looking forward to that. I, I just... Do you think that, that that title doesn't really gel with a sequel? Baghead um, 2. <laughs> Baghead 2. I don't know. I mean, I think I think Baghead on its own has... I mean, it stands out, but Baghead 2. I don't know. It just sounds pish. It'll be Baghead know. Origins or something. Um or uh bag baghead uh, what baghead not revenge head pre bagged <laughs> pre bagged <laughs> <laughs> the, the prequel prequel <laughs> and then they'll don't not to forget bagheaded <laughs> baghead for life <laughs> 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 Plastic <laughs> baghead. <laughs> That's the one. That's it, man. Baghead for life. <laughs> baghead for life. Baghead's baghead's. <laughs> what we're gonna do? What you gonna do? <laughs> what you gonna do when well, it's got a hole in it? <laughs> <laughs> baghead for life. <laughs> That's a Matthew man waiting to happen, isn't it? I see it all the time. That's a Matthew man. Baghead for life. <laughs> 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 oh god but I, like, like I said not totally without merit but I just find it boring man I, I can't I can't get past the fact that I was I wasn't entertained like I said we, we've watched things like Beaster Bunny and Killer Sofa bad films can be entertaining but for me this was maybe it was trying to be better than it, it could be and it just failed I don't know. I, I don't share that. I honestly didn't see it as a failure. I didn't. I enjoyed it. Heavy liked it. I, I heavy I, liked it, man. I, I just I don't I don't think they were able to to mask how how cheap it was as well. Again, I saw it in, I saw it in the cinema. I don't. I, I didn't feel that way. I saw it in what, three point one. Um, I I, I didn't. I didn't mm. feel that way at all. I, I, I mean, I maybe, think I'm... maybe I'll watch it again and see if I feel any differently about it. But I can't see how how it's going to pull me in. I can't think of enough good things about it that it's going to change my mind on the fact that I was just bored. I just I hate being bored, man. Like the, Aye. I, I understand the concept of a slow burn. Like I, I love a slow burn movie. Actually, when a film slowly, slowly builds and builds to the point where like maybe the first hour you kind of go right this is getting a wee bit boring but then you do like a, a ton of boring ass movies though right. I, I do man i'm old you forget this about me i'm old as fuck man i'm old on <laughs> dumb. and everybody forgets that because <laughs> because of my immature attitude <laughs> and the fact that i send <laughs> farts to my mate <laughs> <laughs> forget i'm like a four-year-old man like like back in the day, I, I should have I should have owned my own fucking coal shoveling business. But no, you know I'm sitting farting into a phone and sending it to my pal and talking <laughs> shit on the internet. Oh, good times, good times. Uh, and I wouldn't have it any other way, to be honest. <laughs> Neither would I. I love me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was hoping you have. I hey, was hoping I'd a good laugh at you there. <laughs> <laughs> It's, oh, um, perfectly ten clicks thing. there, man. <laughs> yeah. By the way, coming up on the show, which I'm heavy looking forward to. These are just some of the episodes, right? Why have you started saying we... heavy all the time? Have I? Have I? Ah, you, mate, you've heavy been doing it the night, heavy. Fucking have hell, I? man! You've been heavy using the word heavy. And it's uh, it's a very new age thing, and I'm not comfortable with it. And I need you to stop it because it's freaking me the fuck out more than your mad Zoom. <laughs> okay, well I'm going to put a counter on now. Every time I say hey, heavy, well, what I'm really, really looking forward to here is our review of Basket <laughs> Case, 
which looks like a lot of fun. I've, I've put off watching it until I know whether or not we're getting a, an interview. But that this episode will be coming very soon as well. Another Arrow short film special by the Jim and Emma podcast. The fine folks at Arrow's loved our short film special previous that they've sent us a ton more great uh, short films. And there's more than just what you see here. And um, we will be we'll be interviewing a lot of the filmmakers behind this. I can't wait to watch me. I'm, I'm loving the titles, by the way. <laughs> Meet Maestro, <friend>. Maestro, Maestro, <laughs> Bark, and then. <laughs> Fucking Keith! <laughs> but I'm, 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 I'm still looking for. I'm looking forward to them all. I'm looking forward to them. All. I have I told. I've told you the Keith story before, haven't I? You hate the name Keith. No, everybody hates the name Keith. I, I think it's, it's just the way the world works, man. If you're called Keith, you're like, oh, fucking Keith. Um, but <laughs> Wait, the other day. no, no, it was, uh-huh. it, was a, it was a woman. Uh, the woman I used to work with. Called Keith. Uh, <laughs> ah, a woman called Keith. Aye. It's, not either, it's not with the realms of possibility these days, right? Um, so she, <laughs> she she was writing something. And she's like, "Is it E before I or I before E?" I was like, "Well, I said it's normally I before E, but there are exceptions to that." What is it you're trying to write? I went. It's my son's name, Keith. You can't spell your own son's name. You are clever. I love how clever you are. I mean, the other day I said to you, have you ever met anybody called Kenny who wasn't a straight up wanker? <laughs> and I said, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> See, when you said that, I passed myself. I I when like, I ah. sent you the two words just saying my dad, I knew you would not yourself, man. <laughs> but dead. what I would say to that, right? Uh-huh. What I would say to that is his name's <laughs> Kenneth. Right, but he hated right. Kenneth. Aye. He hated Kenny more, so he settled on Ken. My dad's name's Ken. Uh, well, I thought it was just Ken. I didn't think. No, but so it, Kenneth. Kenneth isn't always but, Kenny, though. Some folk are actually just called Kenny. Ah, yeah, I was. <laughs> Banker. I know. It's like um, some like my wife's sister's name's Beth, and I'm like, is that short for Bethany? It's like, no, it's just Beth. I'm like, well, Beth so to I, me is short for Elizabeth. Oh, that's um, not her name either. It's just Beth, which is it's just, it's just Beth. No, Beth. like my my dad's my dad's uh, birth name is Kenneth, and <laughs> uh, he he goes by Ken. But when people called him Kenny, he was like fucking. So uh, I don't know if even he, he knew that Kenny's a wanker. Kenny. Or no, he doesn't. Uh, even he knew. Even he knew. Even he knew. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I remember telling me once, I think he was waiting in a, I mean, this was back in like the late 60s or um, early 70s maybe, and he was waiting in the post office and his name got called, like your name got called for stuff back then, and uh, the guy decided to read my dad's name in, ga- ga- in Gaelic or something, so the guy was like, Quinneth Hewn McCuick? My dad's like, Quinneth Hewn McCuick? Kenneth in the cave. <laughs> oh, it's me. <laughs> That's a Mr. Bean sketch. Uh, <laughs> um, by Kenny, I, I don't. I think I've I've known probably one Kenny in my life. Um, and I think it was about a fud, to be honest. I knew a few Kennys. One was really really nice. Um, but I usually when I see a Kenny, I'm like, oh fuck me, man. They're usually wankers. I've got a cousin called Kenny. He's a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you're watching Kenny, it's nice to have you here. Ah, he's a fuck, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye. So I baggy. I'm joking. <laughs> I, I think we pretty much said all we can say about baggy. Is I would say go and watch it, go buy it if if you're in if you're into media like I am, the physical media, it is available to stream, or you can buy it Amazon.com. You can also stream it, I'm sure, on the Arrow player, but it'll end up elsewhere, everywhere. Um, Ken, how sale the seven seas? Elsewhere, watch. everywhere, all at once. Ah, exactly. So go watch it. Make your mind up. Tell me if I'm right. Tell J Mac if he's right. One of us is right and one of us is wrong. Or it's just purely subjective. I heavy, I really, really liked it. You did it Sorry, again. G-Max! Sorry! And, and the thing is, you're going to act like you meant to do it there and annoy me, and I, I know did. you didn't. I, I know 100%. 
a heavy new year, Disney. Aye. Heavy. Fucking heavy. Is that maybe that bit in Back to the Future? He's like, why do you keep using this word heavy? It's like, there's something with the something wrong with the Earth's, Earth's gravitational pull in the future. He's like, no. <laughs> no this is heavy, Doc. This is heavy, Doc. Right. No. <laughs> so hey, uh, I never even played the trailer. I was meant to play the trailer for it. We'll trailer oh, don't on. bother. We'll get a fucking copyright strike anyway. It's true, eh? Every bloody week, man. Every week. Even when we've got the director do you know what the show you could, Do you know what you could do? Play the trailer mm. without the sound and we'll just talk through it. Can you do that? I don't I don't think I can do it, but I think we can talk while it's on. Ready? Lads and lasses, even though you should have already seen it, here's the trailer for for Bagheads. You should definitely Mate, I tell you, it was class. The trailer's class. <laughs> no, it was class, man. All that happened. <clears throat> there was a bit there that I'm pretty sure never. It all did. I recall it. You weren't paying attention. How I don't remember. Were you when you watched this? What's that? How pissed were you when you watched this? Getting. Not being. <laughs> <laughs> Getting. I don't know. I, I think you need to go back and watch it, mate, because I didn't see a crap film. I didn't say it was crap. I said it was boring. Mm. No buying That's it. A different no thing. It. That's a different thing. No buying it. I mean, no I'm boring, it. but I still think I'm glass. So, hey ho. <laughs> <laughs> so class, man. Uh, Janice says, oh, how pretty. Oh, thank you. We do try, Jenny. So I washed my face before I came on this show the night. I had a shower. I put That's aftershave on before this show. Don't know why. I put aftershave on during the show, man. <laughs> 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 so if you just give me a, a wee second here, just gonna freshen the old breath. <laughs> <laughs> I can still taste it. <laughs> oh man, screw that! My wife does that. She gets, and I'm like, and near her, like, <laughs> sucks, man, sucks. I have so to say though, this life. this is a lovely little cologne made by a little company called Paul Smith. Oh, that's beautiful. Aye, well, sounds class. Cologne's fucking after she man. Cologne, Carlos Cologne. He's a wrestler. Any road. Any road. I digress. So I definitely go to Amazon, .co.uk or .com, depending where you are. And if you're into buying physical media, go ahead and purchase this or go watch it on a streaming. Junie says, laughing my ass off, I was referring to the face of Baghead. Aye. She's, oh, she's okay. a looker. She's a looker. I... I... Oh fucking! I would, I would never <laughs> tell somebody. I would never tell somebody not to watch it because they were. I think watch it. You might. You might enjoy it. I just found it boring. That's that's the thing. I just found it boring. Oh fucking do you, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's going to work really well on audio. I <laughs> know. <laughs> ah, I know. It, didn't it? I was, I was like waiting. It was proper wait, wasn't it? But any road. Um, aye, looking forward to next week because it's going to be class, and hopefully we'll have more to tell you on where it, where we stand with guests. But a lot of cool stuff going to happen this year, so stick with us as you always do. Um, this time next year, Rodney, we be millionaires. Yes, man. <laughs> Leave a ninety-five. <laughs> <laughs> so leave I, the early leave the early bikes <laughs> <laughs> the early bike shifts yes <laughs> uh, but I, I heavy enjoyed it mate 10 out of 10 for my well, no 10 i think i rated it like a seven which is for me that's your usual your usual good film um so heavy looking forward to doing our next episode next week 4.9 right. for me 4.9 unbelievable man unbelievable um so i we're looking forward to next week. Um, I've been Kev. This has been fun. Uh, had a wee whiskey. It's been good. Uh, and I thank you everybody <laughs> for tuning in. You've got whiskey face. Uh, I mean, always classy to Janice. You have no idea. We will meet at some point. By the right? way, that's we'll... something Americans don't say. 
What? Like the Americans don't say that's class. So that's uh, class. Uh, Janice uh, is adopting. She's adopting Mary. the jibber jabber pata. Mary, uh, Janice, uh, Janice love it. Is a, she's a gem niece. She's a gem. <laughs> gem niece. Yeah, absolutely. Damn absolutely. Right. So we will see you guys next week with a class couple of interviews. So hoping that'll be good. Uh, so make sure you download the Arrow Player and go ahead and watch all the films that we say. Fuck off. All right. <laughs> And on that note, J-Mac, anything you want to say before we finish this show? Hi, stop fucking zooming in on yourself. Good night, everybody. Thanks for <laughs> being here. Enjoy the rest of your <laughs> week, guys. Thanks again. See you all next week. Oh,